it's a breezy fall day in Southern Appalachia, and there's just a couple of things I need to do. This time of the year, I kind of feel like Little House on the Prairie. That was one of my favorite books, preparing for the winter, things I need to do uh, to kind of finish up my summer garden and, and put up the rest of the food and just kind of little chores I need to take care of. One of them is putting up all the seeds that I've collected this year and let dry. I, I put them over here on our buffet in the kitchen and you, as you can see I've got I get a lot going and then I have to stop once they're dry and actually take time to put them up uh, so that I know where they're at for next year instead of leaving them out so I'm going to be doing that today as I'm putting up things in the summer that I'm going to actually uh, save the seeds from I lay them out on paper towels to dry after I rinse them and then I try to write on them what they are because if I don't then I forget what I've done I have my memory is not that great so that's kind of what I do so you can see here some Chambers Creek pumpkin seeds that I've saved so uh, there's lots of different ways for you to actually you know store your seeds typically what I would do I like to use little just little baggies and so I might write on here uh, Chambers Creek and then write the date or the year 21 and then put them in the in their little pouch and once they're this dry, they're, you don't have to worry about them sticking together or anything. Now, some people store their seeds in the freezer. Um, Farmer Tim down the road, who's like got the green thumb, he's like the, if you look it up, that's him. You know, in the dictionary, his picture would be there. He keeps all of his in the freezer. I don't keep mine in the freezer. I just store them uh, with all my other seeds, and they seem to do very well that way. I guess if you... You know, you wouldn't want to, might not want to leave them outside or in the, in an area where bugs or something like that could get to them. But so there's my Chambers Creek. In this dish, actually, I didn't have, I didn't write these down. I had, I think I'd laid these on a paper towel until they did get drier and then put them in this to finish drying. But these are uh, candy roaster seeds. I'll put those up. Candy roaster seeds kind of have that little, um, like a little, I don't know what you call that, little piece, clear piece that kind of comes off, but I don't worry about it, just leave them on. All these seeds, or the Chambers Creek and these candy roaster seeds could be roasted and eat too if you want to do that with them. Sometimes we roast them uh, after I'm, usually if I'm putting one up, that's in the next day or two is when we would roast seeds. So these next ones, these little tiny seeds, you can see they're so teeny-tiny, uh, the least of seeds, we would say. These are from the orange tomato, if you've been watching my videos, the little orange one that I got from David and Carolyn, so I'm going to call them, I guess, David and Carolyn, so I'll know. Um, and I saved seeds from them last year, and then this is from this year, though. Uh, the best little Tommy Toe that I have ever eaten, for sure. And they're little tiny seeds. Sometimes when I have ones that are that tiny, it seems like, and especially tomato seeds will kind of, see I lost one right there, will kind of stick to the paper towel a little. I just fold up the entire paper towel and put the whole thing in the, just to kind of keep them all in there, in the bag or whatever I'm using. If there's a little bit of paper towel left on the seed when you scrape it off next spring to plant them, uh, start them in the greenhouse is what we do. It won't hurt it a bit. It's fine. So this is actually my pickled corn. I'll move it out of the way a little bit. So these were my like those there. These were my bean seeds that I was saving. So my, most all of these are greasy beans because that's what we like to grow. You can see here's some I just laid there on top that I still need to uh, hull out, discard those. I saved like these little bitty ones. You should always aim to save the biggest, prettiest bean, but I just can't make myself not save the little ones too because I figure you've got a little life in there. You may, you know, you're just starting out, but you're going to, you're going to grow to be big too, maybe. But mostly you should aim for the bigger, prettier beans to save your seed from, or anything that you're saving from, for that matter. So, 
some of these darker beans are the rattlesnake beans that we grew this year. Those beans, they don't, those don't look very good. I'm not going to save those. There's some more little bitty ones. I think bean seeds are among the easiest of seeds to save because you just let them dry in their hole. A lot of times you can let them dry on the vine, actually. I've done that before. And then hole them out and let them dry another couple of days or something to make sure all the uh, moisture is gone. And then you have them. So you can see this is a great old big bean that's here. And that's, I don't think that's a greasy back. That's something else. And you might say, well, why are you you know mixing them all up you could certainly keep them separate but these are all pole beans so they'll all need to grow up something the majority of them are um, greasy backs for sure but it's okay with me if there's a, a stray rattlesnake bean or, or whatever thrown in there with them is okay but you could certainly make sure to keep them separate so some of these little bitty ones you can see I kept that. I think that was off a bush bean, but I don't even feel a bean seed in that one. So no reason to worry about it. The last few times that I pick beans at the end of the summer, I look out for any dry ones and any ones that kind of look bad. I lay those to the side and let them dry. I think that's pretty much it for those. Now that one might have one in it. Yeah, they look kind of pitiful looking. Okay, so there's my, my bean seed, mostly greasy backs. These larger ones are from the uh, rattlesnake beans. I like to reuse my plastic bags at least once or twice. So uh, these are some that I had saved from something that we were doing where I'd already used them for a different purpose, but then they're perfect for actually saving seeds in. So these seeds are already wrapped up nicely for me. So Mary's beans, uh, a pole bean, a string bean. So a sweet, uh, one of our sweet friends, Leon, sent me these. He actually sent me some Jing Orange too, uh, Oakery. That's Oakery. These are my favorite. But he was telling me about these beans, and so he was going to let me try them. So he sent me a really ample supply, which is great. He also sent me some little yellow dahlia, dahlia uh, seeds. We don't know if they will what they will do if you can actually grow them from that but we're gonna I'm gonna try it we'll see open it up and see what's in there it's just the bloom is what it is so I know that dahlias usually grow from tubers that's how you how you would buy them so I don't know you never know though I'll plant it and we'll see what happens dahlias remind me of my great aunt Ina uh, she always had them in her garden with her other stuff and she would dig them up every year and then replant them and they were just so beautiful so pretty so thank you to Leon for that. Here's some butternut squash that I uh, grew, and so those need to be can be saved for for next year. Won't bore you with that. These were uh, watermelons. These were sugar babies. That's like my favorite little variety of watermelon to grow. So I will have plenty of those for next year. They did really good this year for us. They're the sweetest little watermelon. Sugar Baby is the variety. If you want to look for it, it's pretty popular. Uh, let's see. Being on the north side of the mountain, it's hard for me to uh, grow watermelons because I don't get enough sunshine. But these do pretty good. And even the ones that don't get very large, if they're only like the size of a softball, they're so sweet. Really good. This, in this bowl, this was my cushaw, my great old big cushaw. If you missed those videos, you can go back and watch it. I still have two or three cushaws on the porch that I need to do something with uh, pretty soon. So you can see these have kind of stuck to the paper towel. You can just kind of gently pull them loose.
This was probably we the, just a, one of the best years we've ever had for winter squash, for pumpkins and cushaws and things like that. They just did so very well. This was the green and white striped cushaw. So these paper towels that I had them laying on, a lot of times I'll just fold them up gently and put them in my garden and stuff. And then next summer or next spring, I mean, when I'm out gardening or in the greenhouse and I need a paper towel, I'll use them because that's all they've had was seeds uh, laying on them there. My bowl back. So I'm just going to fold up the butternut since they're smaller and put them in there. And interesting, you see on here I wrote 2021 because this butternut, that's an interesting thing I'm going to show you next, uh, some things I need to take care of. It was actually grown in 2020, not in 2021. So, but there's the seeds. They'll still, still grow good. Um, in other words, I didn't actually harvest it. I didn't, I, I harvested it, but I didn't actually cut it up and cook it until this year. So that's how wonderful um, butternuts and other types of winter squash can be that they can last that long. So another thing that's on my list today is to put up some butternut squash. I want to dry them. Well, these are not butternut squash that I grew this year. They're butternut squash that I grew in 2020. So that's how long they can last. Isn't that amazing that they're still here and still edible? Um, you know, maybe slightly past their peak, but still definitely edible. And that's just so amazing. So if you've been watching my videos, you've heard me say that this year I want to try drying pumpkin. Well, my first attempt at drying pumpkin did not work. And actually, it wasn't a pumpkin. It was a candy roaster, but still basically the same thing. So I wanted to do it like the old timers of what I'd read about them, cutting it in uh, rounds kind of and hanging them to dry. Well, I did that and mine molded really quickly. So I don't know if it was just you know, this has been a really wet end of summer. I don't know what it was, if I didn't have enough sunshine or what. But so today I'm going to process these. I want to dry them, but I'm going to dry them in the dehydrator just to make sure that I actually save them. Cut them up into cubes and then dry them. Uh, and then I've got my ones that I grew this summer. So, uh, and I also have a few from Farmer Tim down the road who generously shared with me. So I have those to actually just eat on throughout the winter kind of for, uh, storage and then if you know if I don't eat them all this winter I can do the same thing like I did with these we do eat them but somehow I managed to have I guess I had so many from 2020 that we we just didn't get them all eat anyway so that's what I'm going to do today so you can see the inside of the butternut so not not totally I mean not as fresh maybe as the one that you would open that's grew this year but still not totally you know just beginning to dry is all so we're going to get out that inner part just like you would with a, a fresh one and then i'm going to peel them and then i'm going to um, chop them up into cubes before i dry them Now that we've got them peeled, I'm just going to chop them up into smallish cubes. You could certainly process these. Uh, you don't have to dry them. You could put them in the freezer, do whatever you prefer. It's just that I have a lot in the freezer. And sometimes I love to put stuff in the freezer, but my only fear of the freezer is if the power was to go off for an extended time, and it can happen. Not often. Our power goes off sometimes, but it's, you know, usually restored within uh, several hours, but can happen. You know, everybody always remembers in my lifetime, remembers the blizzard of uh, the early 90s where our power was off for almost two weeks. So it can possibly happen, and then I hate to think about losing stuff. So I do have plenty in the freezer, though. And then this, I like the thought of drying it. I just wanted to be able to dry it 
and I'm not give up yet. I'm going to try it again. But to dry it like in the old days, the pumpkin, which you could cut these in rings too and actually do it like I've read about. Since these are, uh, you know, kind of already beginning to dry out on the inside, hopefully that'll help them dry faster in the actual in the dehydrator. Sometimes it's easier, I think it's easier to peel them before you actually cut them up, but it's just if you, you just have to find the way that works best for you. And sometimes I do it one way and sometimes I do it another way. Peeling them, though, before you cut them does give you kind of something to hold on to, but then when you're cutting them, if they're slicker, they're harder to hold on to, so it kind of works both ways, I guess. see this one's still good too it is beginning to dry up though but again I hope that'll help me when it comes to putting them in the dehydrator it's kind of nature's already uh, started the process kind of makes you wonder wonder if you just left them what would eventually happen I guess would they just become a dry like like kind of how gourds will dry out on the inside and then you can make a birdhouse out of them I don't know yeah it's just amazing it's like a such a wonderful thing and people uh, would you know be curious about well where do you store them I wish I had like a nice some kind of root cellar or something like that but these have literally just been sitting in my kitchen so uh, you know us coming and going the lights on the heat on in the winter the air on in the summer so nothing special did I do they were just sitting around where I set my potatoes and my onions in the cabinet where I put them that's kind of just where they've been so if you want to, after you get them cut, you could take a little paring knife and, and trim the inside out. Uh, but that's kind of personal preference. Or you could just work harder at getting them when you get the seeds out of getting that part in there out. Seems like when the pieces are littler, they're easier to deal with. It's just amazing though. Aren't you just amazed that they can last that long? Now when you're thinking about ones to save for winter, like if you want to just leave them over winter to see if they would make it like mine did, you want to make sure that you have some, like here's one from this year that's very firm and sturdy. There's no bad places on it. But here's one from this year that's, see, I don't even know if it'll be any good when I cut it open. It's soft, so I would never try to keep that one because you can kind of see the something, whatever happened to it. So that's why I've got it here. And then I had a little one. I always hear it is. This is a, a little one that was from this year. And see, when I got it out of the garden, I broke the, I, I didn't, wasn't careful, and I did that. So then I'm afraid that would, it's kind of hardened over, but still, I'll probably go ahead and cut that one up and either eat it or, or dry it like we're doing today. Corey, uh, when Corey seen this one, she said it was the cutest little squash she'd ever seen. <laughs> so she thought it was really cute. So here's another one. Not as dried out as the one we just did, but you can see it's still beginning to dry. The one that we I just cut up with the white places was where it was really drying out. So this one's not as dried. But even that one with the white, it smelled great. It was great. It was firm. It was just beginning to dry out slowly on the inside. So this one uh, still looks good. Hard to believe, ain't it? Gosh, that old, still going good. That's why I love to grow winter squash. Now, I've never kept the, uh, I've kept uh, candy roasters that long, but I've never kept the Kushaws 
the great big ones are big pumpkins, really big pumpkins. I've kept little pumpkins, but uh, big ones because I'm, they're so big, <laughs> they're hard to store. I don't have a place to store them. These are little and I can, you know, put them around the edges of my counter or around the edges of the floor or whatever. So they're kind of easier to manage than those big ones. But I'd love to try one of those big ones and see if it lasted in the same way. I've always found it to be so enjoyable to put up food like this. Uh, so it makes me feel so self-sufficient. Of course, you can go to the grocery store and buy butternut squash all winter long because it does last so long. It's, it's one of those hardy things you can find all pretty much year round. But there's just something so rewarding about uh, growing your own, but especially about preserving your own. You know, a lot of people can't have a garden because they live in a situation where there's nowhere to garden or maybe they're not able. But even if you go to the uh, farmer's market and support other farmers, or even if, you, if the only place you have is a grocery store, just to be able to know uh, once this is dried and stored and then on a cold winter day when I pull it out and put it in a freezer, I mean, put it in a soup or a stew or, um, you know, make some bread out of it or whatever we choose to do with it. It's just, it's just so rewarding to know that you did that. I don't know. It makes it taste better somehow, I swear. So the girls were, when they were little, um, you know, really little trick or treating days, I didn't care to get them a pumpkin every year. I wasn't growing pumpkins in those days, but I didn't want to waste the pumpkin by making a jack-o'-lantern out of it. And they didn't really ever ask for one anyway, but uh, I would just want them to admire the pretty pumpkin. And then I would, you know, process it and put it in the freezer. And in those days, Matt and Pap worked together. They built houses and oftentimes of the morning, pretty much every morning, Pap would walk up here to our house and they'd have coffee and they'd talk about what they was going to do that day or something like that. So one morning, this was probably early January or early December, late November, or something like that. He come up and, and him and Matt were in there talking and I had had this pumpkin sitting in my kitchen, you know, for the, all that time. And I, so I went to ask him, I said, Pap, I've had this pumpkin that I got for the girls for Halloween and I want to make sure that it's um, still okay to just leave it. It's in the kitchen. It's still good. It's not going to go bad. And he said, oh, no, you, why, well, you got to use that right now. You can't just leave pumpkin like that. And then they went back to talking, and I kept thinking about that, and I thought, that just can't be right. And I said, Pap, why can't you? I see other people leaving pumpkins. Even the ones people leave outside seem to last. And he said, yeah, but they've not cut theirs. And I said, oh, no, I've not cut mine either. It's still whole. It's still just, it's just sitting in the kitchen. And then he was like, oh, well, you can leave that till spring of the year. It'll be fine. So he just, in the, when he, the first part, he thought that I had cut the pumpkin and was just leaving it there. Or either I'd made a jack-o'-lantern out of it. I don't know. I'm not sure which what he thought. But once he understood it was whole, still sitting there, he was like, oh, no, you can leave that till spring of the year. So now I'm going to cut open the little one that Corey thought was really cute. Maybe I'll try to peel it first. Uh, and you can see it peels easier. So it's not hardened because, woo, if I could hold on to it, it's not hardened from sitting there for over a year. It's not cured, I guess you would say. And it's wetter. You probably can't see that, but as I'm um, feeling it, it's much wetter. I think instead of drying this one, I'm going to roast it and have me some roast squash for my dinner today. That'd be good on top of my salad I usually eat. I would have left it, but like I said, I tore that place on top and I was just afraid it wouldn't last and I didn't want it to go bad with me not paying attention to it. And it was little anyway. Like Corey said, it was the cutest, she said it was the cutest squash she had ever seen. Let's cut it open and see what it looks like on the inside. So you can see, big difference. The stuff's still, still really wet. You can practically just dig in it with your fingers. So a big difference in it.
much easier to uh, get the seeds out for sure. So me, I'm going to save that one and roast it for my dinner. Oh, let's cut into this one before we stop. I'm not even going to peel it yet because I just don't know if it's any good. Let's see what it looks like since it's kind of, you can see, soft and squiggly. It, although it's pretty hard now that I'm cutting into it, I think it's probably going to be okay. And there's, you know, no rhyme or reason to why one goes bad and one doesn't when you're outside. So it still looks good. It is, well, I don't know. It is kind of soft. It smells good, though. So I'll have to think about that one if I'm going to use it or not. Because you can see how soft it is. I can push my finger in. Kind of soft. And that was one from this year. It just, for some reason, didn't do good. So this is the one that was soft. I ended up trimming off the top part that was really soft and keeping the bottom part of it. Um, and it's, you know, it's, if you're a gardener, if you grow your own food, you realize really quickly that the food you grow is not perfect. It's not like the um, picture of the grapes or the tomato or whatever from the grocery store that you see. Oftentimes there's blemishes and all that. Um, so, but if you grow real food, it looks like real food, not like something out of a, a picture book, I guess you'd say. And also there's a huge, you know, the way I was taught growing up was if there was a blemish, it, you didn't throw away the whole thing. You just cut that out and then use the rest of it. So that's kind of the, the motto that I still go by. So that one was kind of iffy, but once I got down into the lower part of it, uh, the flesh was still really firm. So I'd kept both parts of the just just trimmed off that top part that had got really soft and used the rest so i'm ready to dry my butternut squash in the dehydrator but i found some other stuff that needed to be dried some peppers peppers are still going strong but i'm telling you it's chilly out here so there's I'm just waiting for the we've had a few light frosts but i'm waiting for the big frost that kills them but uh, they're still doing good really produced a lot this year the peppers did and then I always go through my apples when I'm drying stuff just to make sure there's not thin apples getting soft or getting iffy. I go ahead and cut it up so that I can dry it too. So I've got a few dry apples here. So now we're ready to put our pieces. Boy, I got that one a little big. I'm going to have to come back with a knife and check that. I was too excited talking to y'all. So it'll this will take several hours to, for them to dry. You just kind of keep checking on them is the way I do it, and I take them off as they're dried and some of them take longer than others, obviously, because my pieces are not all even. But it'll at least take several hours. So this is some Xena seeds that I collected, oh, about a month or two ago. And I've had them in this basket kind of drying on the porch. You can see. When I was a little girl... And Granny would save her uh, Xena seeds all through each year from year to year. She would go let them dry. We'd pick them off. She'd let them dry. There's all the seeds. And then she'd find an old piece of mail, an old envelope. She'd store them in that, fold it down. And that's how she'd save them till the coming year when she'd replant them again. You can use an old piece of mail like Granny, but you could use anything. You could use... Um, a little glass jar if you have one you could use certainly use a plastic bag like I was using for the seeds um, in the house the ones that I dried both of those would work really well. well I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today as I kind of do some of the last preparations to get ready for winter I'm thinking of the seeds for next year already thinking about that garden and also putting up some food for my family to enjoy during the cold winter months 
the cold winter winds coming. I can feel it. We've not had our first fire, fire yet in the wood stove, but I'm thinking it'll be pretty quick. Uh, and I'm thinking we'll have a hard frost pretty quick too. Today's a pretty chilly day, airish day, as we would say. It's airish, am I airish, with a little breeze going on. Uh, but it's a beautiful day in Southern Appalachia, and I hope you enjoyed visiting with me. And I hope, as always, you'll continue to drop back by often and celebrate Appalachia.